Hello YouTube, this is Matt Wicks of the Bluebell Model Railway Channel. Today, as you can see, it has finally arrived after three years. The Duke Dog from Backman. This particular model is 31-086 with a running number of 9017 which you can find on the Bluebell Railway in Sussex. As I mentioned, this has been on order for three years. It's arrived this morning from Rails of Sheffield. Um, it's been a long time. I sold my K's kit of a Duke Dog oh, five years ago now. Uh, I heard about the me actually measuring it quite a few years before. And with this announced in 2011, I think it was, or March 2011, uh, I immediately sold that just before. Um, just before they were announced to uh, put the money into uh, a savings account ready for this to actually arrive. So a little bit of information on the Duke Dog or Earl Class or 3200. <coughs> um, basically the reason why they're called Duke Dogs or nicknamed Duke Dogs, they're made up of Duke Boilers and Bulldog frames. So basically they're a combination of two to make a new class of locomotive. Uh, right, a little bit of history. Uh, they were the last, uh, well, one of the last uh, steam locomotive clusters retain outside frames. I imagine that means the motion mainly. Um, the first prototype conversion retained its Duke number and name, but the others took the numbers from the 32XX series which would explain why um, Earl of Berkeley uh, down on the blue bell actually ran with 3217 and you can get name uh, nameplates or etch plates for that from uh, Model Master. Um, moving on to a bit more information, uh, they were given the name of Earls, which this one would have been Earl of Berkeley as you know, who had uh, some connection to the Great Western uh, the names were removed and reapplied to Castle Class locomotives in 1937. So, probably the main reason for not having etched nameplates of this model, which I will mention when I go through all the uh, specs of it, um, which is probably why it doesn't have any with it. Um, anyway, let's move on to the model now. Um, this model is uh, not as preserved. Uh, this is actually based on the 1955 um, version of this locomotive which to be honest the Batman they actually did turn up on the Bluebell like this but with red bat nameplates I think uh, from old pictures I've seen uh, the reason why they say it's 1955 and not as preserved it has got a slightly different tender to it uh, the, uh, the preserved example is running with a riveted sided tender and this one has a flat sided tender so it hasn't got hardly any rivets on the side at all um, so if you're expecting a preserved one it really actually isn't but it's good enough to actually say it is um, it has a 21 pin DCC decoder uh, chip blank in it so you can put a 21 chip in it if you need uh, it has a 440 wheel arrangement so none under the cab and uh, let's go into a few more uh, technical details and detailing bits of the model. Okay, so going on to the details of the model, um, you can see here we have a, a, a metal coal load which uh, fits into the tender. You can see two little locating lugs on there to locate into two holes on the tender. You might just be able to see one just there. Uh, so I'll probably put some real coal over this and just hide this a little bit because the tender is very very light so uh, you will need this so you can't really take it out and just put coal in there um, but I tend to put coal over the top of this anyway just to uh, give it a bit of shape uh, you have a nice detailing pack as well uh, you've got all the uh, brake gear in there you've got your free link uh, screw link couplings in there You've got some fire irons in there and the big circular thing in there which you can see is I think it's for a speaker holder or something in the uh, tender. Uh, there's also a couple of bits for the um, frames in there to uh, which 
just sticks on the underneath underneath the actual uh, underneath the axles of the wheels. So uh, a bit a bit like the um, city class from uh, Backman as well. So uh, that's where all those little bits go, which you'll probably find on the information sheets inside the packaging. Um, as mentioned, it does not have any etch plates because that was uh, before uh, or before or after the time I should say of uh, the name plates actually being removed and put on castle classes um, but you can get name plates if you wish to try and turn it into a uh, preserved example uh, which I'll bring in front of the camera just now hopefully you can see those okay you can get uh, 9017 etched uh, cab side plates from Foxes uh, the name plates you can see in here are actually from uh, Model Master and if I turn this around you can see uh, you can see here uh, 3217 so this is from Model Master um, so you can run it as the 3200 class if you wish as well with the original plates and name plates having the Earl of Berkeley on there um, that will be for the green one when it turns up uh, which I think is coming from Holtz Model uh, Place in Cardiff I think they are um, but that basically uh, is the main detailing package and extras you can actually buy for this engine. Um, let's go a little bit more in depth into how the actual model is uh, made and details etc and uh, show you the underside of the loco as well. Okay we'll start with the underside of the uh, locomotive here. Uh, you can see the famous orange plug going between the uh, the tender and the loco for the DCC chip which is located in the tender. You can also see this locomotive has, uh, or model I should say, has uh, tender pickups which is uh, linked to the motor via the wonderful orange plug. Um, that picks, off, uh, picks up the power off the uh, actual axles just before the plastic insulator between the two to separate the contact between the two rails. Uh, you can also see a backman, I don't know why they've done this, but they've put the brake blocks a mile away from the wheel on the outside. So we've got the wheel here, and you've got the brake block about well, 2 or 3 millimeters further forward of the wheel. Uh, so obviously designed for broad gauge, obviously, on this uh, model. Which is a bit of a shame, really, that they've uh, chosen to do that. But uh, I guess you won't really tell from a distance, but... Uh, yeah, they could have moved them a little bit further in, but they just made it part of the actual uh, moulding of the chassis. But I'm sure there's ways that they could have moved that uh, back a little bit so it's actually running in line with the, uh, the tender wheels. Um, the draw bar is actually um, adjustable for length between the uh, the chassis, uh, the loco chassis, and the tender chassis. There's a slight, there's a small screw just under the uh, the first axle of the tender which you can move back and forwards. I've moved it slightly closer from uh, uh, from what it came as originally so I've moved that uh, a little bit closer but it will go around my curves okay. Um, I think the minimum radius for this loco is second uh, radius curves um, so uh, that's worth noting if your uh, layer has any tighter curves than that. Uh, it has uh, pickups on the main four driving wheels on the loco I believe it's got a three pole motor in um, so the whole chassis uh, motor chassis is just the fr these uh, four main driving wheels and that is uh, secured in place with a screw at the back and a screw at the front um, moving forward to the main uh, the main bogey on the front nicely molded it's actually got a spring under there as well so it's quite lightly sprung um, it's quite difficult to get these um, locos with this wheel arrangement nicely balanced so you don't get too much lift from the front bogey and you don't get too much uh, interference from the draw bar as well which takes uh, takes half a grip away from the actual main driving wheels uh, putting extra weight in this loco would be difficult because there's probably not much room around the motor and also if you put it too far forward it won't pull anything at all so um, it's best to leave it as it is and try and <laughs> try and live with what you've got really but I have heard from people that these can pull around about six to seven on the flats which is a bit over the top for this class I think on the blue belt it managed four or five max um, I think these locos used to run in 
Wales, North Wales somewhere uh, in their history or work around Wales. Um, but that's the general uh, running uh, underneath uh, of the actual model, which uh, is quite nice. And we'll move on to the uh, local body itself and take you through some of the details it has in there as well. Okay, starting at the back here on the tender, uh, you can see a nicely uh, moulded tender here. Uh, no rivets down the sides I previously mentioned. Uh, there's no sprung buffers on this locomotive at all, e at either end. Um, so you have to put up with the moulded metal buffer heads, but at least it's better than all moulded plastic ones as I noted on the uh, Hornby Duke of Gloucester recently. Uh, it's got separately fitted handrail wires, it's got some lovely uh, detail for the, um, the rain cover which would come from the roof down to the tender. Um, you can see one of the holes for the uh, the coal load, which I'll just pop back in now, so you can see where it just slots down there quite easily. I just slide forward, and in you go. So that fits quite nicely back in there, no problem. You've got uh, some separately fitted um, uh, brake levers here, and also you've got a little uh, U to hold the. Uh, to hold the uh, fire irons and stuff in the side here which has got a separately moulded piece to put them in which comes in the detail pack as well worth noting uh, it has a early BR crest on the tender as well and uh, as I mentioned it has pickups on this tender as well let's move on to the loco end now okay starting on the, uh, the loco itself uh, you can see into the cab here at the back uh, you can see some nicely fitted, uh, separately fitted pipe work, uh, regulator handle, uh, various gauges and nicely picked out uh, and painted as well. Got some glazing in the cab windows. Uh, also the floor is painted a, a strange colour brown I must admit. Um, and also has a, a working, I think it's called a, a full plate or a drop plate. Uh, you can see here moving on here, same as the city class as well which Batman also did. A uh, nice bit of detail there and nicely hides the gap between the uh, cab and the tender. Uh, moving round onto the uh, side of the loco and front of the loco. Moving on to the side of the locomotive, uh, you can see the entire length of it now. Uh, the actual frames are actually uh, metal or cast, I should say. Uh, I mean, Batman have done this in the past with various other ones, uh, other models like uh, the N and I think it was the city as well and various others um, this adds a nice bit of weight to the loco as this is quite a light loco for its size as there's not a lot of room to put any weight in as I probably did mention somewhere before as the motor and the gearbox take up most of the uh, the firebox and the forward part of the boiler behind the uh, the, the forward uh, uh, the forward driving wheels um, but anyway the, the chassis of the body is actually die cast uh, the main boiler and cab are injection moulded as well as the back head. I uh, got some nice uh, additions to the top and a separately fitted uh, safety valve and dome. Also got a, a whistle shield as well, shielding the uh, the whistles in front. I uh, got nice uh, rivet detail on the uh, the cab roof and the uh, the smoke box. It's not as pronounced as uh, some locos have. I don't know really if that's just uh, the way they're doing things now or what but uh, it's not very noticeable for rivet detail it could have been a little bit more uh, a little bit more noticeable but uh, either way still it's all detail it still looks pretty good to me um, onto the smoke box it's got a lovely uh, turned copper cap to it which is very very nice and uh, yeah, generally look, it captures the look of the Duke Dog pretty well. There's been a few little complaints about uh, obviously lack of etched plates um, and something to do with the boiler pitch as well. But you know, it doesn't really matter to be honest. Uh, it is what it is and it looks good. Moving around to the front of the loco now. Okay, around to the front of the loco, you can see now the rivets are a little bit clearer now, the light is uh, just about catching them. Uh, you can see uh, some uh, lamp irons around the at the front of the loco. Separately fitted um, 
handle on the front of the smoke box as well as uh, a few other little fittings to the side. Um, no spring buffers as I mentioned. You've got the vacuum pipe on the front here and also you've got a very strangely shaped uh, steam pipe mainly risen up like this to keep it out of the way of the coupling as it swings around. Um, paintwork is uh, nice on this loco, nice clear red uh, buffer beam there. Uh, unlike the Hornby Duke of Gloucester, like I was saying before, that was very, very wishy-washy and almost pink in some places. Um, and it just shows the quality of uh, the Batman model. You know, it's it's well made. It's uh, particularly, uh, you know, captures the prototype very, very well, and it is, uh, I think, a very attractive model. And uh, I think that pretty much proves in the sales. I mean. Uh, Rails of Chef were completely sold out of 9017 and also the Weffed one which is 9022 I think it is. Still got the DCC one available uh, which I have on the way uh, from another retailer. Um, but overall a very nice model by Batman and my hat's off to them. I've been waiting for this for a long long time but uh, as I mentioned it's probably worth waiting for Batman to produce because uh, I think their models are um, quite something when they actually do them right and uh, this one is no exception. Anyway I suppose it's on to the running of this loco now. Right so on the rolling road now ready for testing and running in. Our both ways is uh, probably the best uh, way of doing this uh, little exercise. I will also note as well I did check the loco over before uh, taking out the box and running it in and I did notice one of the uh, the main driving wheel uh, pickups was bent so I had to re-bend that and uh, make it so it touches the wheel because it was actually bent away from the wheel which is quite simple to do just get some tweezers and bend it to outwards so it touches the wheel and put it back into place. Um, so have a look at that before you uh, run yours. Anyway, let's see how it runs. Here we go, nice and smooth, straight out of the box. That's quite a typical uh, Batman trait I find when I open up a new model. You put it on the rolling road and uh, it immediately starts nice and smoothly first time. I mean, I'm only using a old Hornby controller here. Um, but what I find with Hornby engines and with air motors is they kind of do need quite a lot of warm up if they've been sat around for quite a while. Um, obviously this has just come in the country from uh, from Backman in China and uh, I think they arrived just before Christmas but obviously to get off the boat out of quarantine etc and into Backman and out to uh, retailers takes quite a few weeks. I think the first impressions of this running, I mean this is very slow running straight out of the box which is incredible to be honest. Uh, very smooth, very quiet as you can hear. As I mentioned the uh, haulage capacity for this, I have heard on the flat 6 to 7 coaches which is uh, just slightly exaggerated, it really would need, uh, probably only pull about 4 or 5. Um, but generally, yeah, it's brilliant running, absolutely brilliant running. Nice detailed locomotive and captures the prototype extremely well. 